welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here my name is Ikuma. i'm a fashion designer and a fashion dressmaker on today's tutorial guys i'm going to show you guys my journey on making this bridal dress and of course as you guys know we're going to be doing the whole construction of this dress i'm going to take you guys through the whole process of making this dress yes with all that being said um i'll just take a few seconds to talk about this package i received from my advice um i already opened it because i had to check what i want to show you guys first um this is it Starry projector light. Unboxing this, it has a remote control, it has a USB cord, a Bluetooth where you could play your music, and if you use my code Ify, you get a discount. So this is what the light looks like. Yes, the link to where you could purchase this was going to be in the description box below. So do check that out. Without further ado, let's head right into this tutorial. You guys already know feel i just want to say thank you to my lovely subscribers and to those you know that show me this love and support sometimes i feel like oh do i really deserve this much love but then don't forget to like share comment subscribe you can also turn up the notification dumbbell below um close to the subscribe button um just so you get notified when i post a new video love you all the link to my Instagram page is going to be in the description box below, so do check that out. I want to say a very big thank you to Happiness. Happiness did my makeup. Dami also helped out with, you know, making videos. He took some really, really bum ass pictures too for me. The link to their handles is also going to be in the description box below. And shout out to my sister. shopping guys i purchased 30 yards of orgasm fabric you might need to get more like 50 yards because the 30 yards i had to manage and this is my quinoline i think you call it quinoline or quinoline you could also call it horsehair braid i got two packs i ended up using more if you stay tuned to the end of the video you get to see that i got my size of rack hub we got some satin which i got five yards of satin and i purchased four yards of lining moving forward to the fabric and the fabric i got um i think as you received i got for 22k one yard of fabric and this fabric was really expensive though it was expensive with all that being said and done we're just going to move over to our pattern drafting i started off by taping our pattern piece down and moving forward i go in with my french curve this will help us to you know get the curve of our bust So from my sketch, I later realized I wanted to have a little bit of net fabric in between and I'm just basically going to be measuring one inch there and half of an inch below. Connecting that with my ruler. I went in with my French curve to highlight, you know, the place we cleaned and I'm just covering that like so. Moving forward. Um, we're going to be getting our back and I'm going to go down by 1cm Connecting that from that point over to our 1cm where we have our 1cm drop And I'm going to connect that like so Moving forward, I'm going to be doing what I call that manipulation And I'm basically transferring our lower that to the side With that, I'm going to use my French curve to blend that down so I'm going in with my marker just to highlight, you know, all the place we marked out with our pencil. So guys, the link to this um, pattern that I drafted 
will be in the description box below so you can check that out LCB I went in by 2.5 inches and I marked that down and for the lower part I went in by 2 inches just like so over there on our hip line I went in by 1 cm with the help of our ruler I'm going to be marking our lines and we're doing this because we want to have something we call um, I'm sure you know this it's called a loophole For our CB, we are going to be transferring our dart also, just like we did for our center fans. And I'm just going to mark that like so, and with the help of our curve, also repeating the same thing we did for our center fans. So because we want to have an inbuilt corset, um, if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm sure you're definitely going to see what I'm talking about. And I marked 0.5 inches from that point and using my French curve like so to blend that in. I flip the French curve over and repeat the same step. Like I said, we're having an inbuilt corset, so I'm just going to measure um, 7.5 inches and blend that down like so. This will enable me to get like a black cup shape. We're going to have extra lines. These lines, we're going to be adding boning to it. Oh yes guys, I think I forgot to show you guys boning. Yes, we did use boning for this tutorial. Going over to highlight, you know, all the necessary place. So I extended my pattern. That's why you could see that um, paper tape over there. Taking the measurement from the top line all the way to the bottom. left with a total of 79 inches I'm going with my paper tape to tape down our pattern piece so because we added you know extra paper we are just going to be extending our lines guys for my hip line i took the measurement down to where i want my flounce to start and i'm just marking that like so if you notice from my picture if you've seen that on my instagram page you notice that the back of the dress is a bit um has a bit of style or what would i call it it's not in sequence with the front and this is how I was able to achieve that. I went over to clean that out because I wanted, I wanted that to be a little bit curved. So with the help of my French curved, I'm just going to draw a new line. Once that is done, I'm going in by half of an inch, which is 0 0.5 on the sides, just like so in the video. And with the help of my ruler, I'm just going to be connecting that up to our hip line. Up to our hip line and repeat the same thing for our CB, center back. Back to our pattern, we're still going over to extend our line. So we're going to extend our center front line all the way to the bottom of the paper. And we're going to repeat that also for our center back. Basically, we're just going to extend our lines, guys.
once you're done with all this extension you're going in from your darts your center front darts you're going to be extending your center front dart line so i extended my center front dart line all the way to the bottom for our cb we're going to be dividing the measurement of that line into three so we're going to have three panels over there so i took the measurement and i'm just going to be marking that and also extended this down to the bottom line So I took the measurement, you know, from up there where we want our joining of our flounce all the way to the bottom, going up by five inches. And with the help of my ruler, I'm just going to be connecting that piece like so. This enabled me to have a little bit of shot in front and, you know, long at the back. Once I'm done with that, I'm going in with my scissors, paper scissors, and I'm going to be cutting out my pattern piece. This um, lower panel is what we're going to use for our flounce, which is the lower part of the dress. I like to tell people like, um, if you're watching this and maybe you don't how, know how to draft um, your pattern piece, whatever pattern you know how to draft, you could use this method somehow and be able to interpret um, this method into your own pattern piece that you know and another thing also again is for you to also jot down things really really helps a lot i'm going over now to label my pattern piece this is just to avoid any future confusion because <laughs> the center backs are already looking alike cutting the piece or our pieces we're just going to keep that at side and proceed to this upper part of this dress and i'm just going to be cutting that like so so we'll note guys we are not cutting you know the corsets for the main satin of the dress well you're cutting the corset for the lining so that's why i say it's an inbuilt corset which means the corset is inside the lining like the lining that is the corset you guys are just going to see what i'm talking about i think it's better if you see it than me you know trying to explain it with my mouth and i'm just going to be cutting that little piece and that's going to be for our net
now we're proceeding to our satin and i'm just going to be folding our satin into two so our, our satin this satin fabric now is on fold so whatever you cut you're going to get two pieces of it i'm going over at the bottom there to measure five inches and i'm pinning that down like so you want to make sure that you pin because this is the only way your pattern piece is going to stay on top of your lining or your satin rather. It is clear one more time that for that line that you see me drawing, it is five inches you're going to be adding and for the up over there you're going to be adding 0 0.5 inches which is half of an inch and with the help of your ruler you're going to be connecting this like so and note you're doing this for both sides so I added five inches on the other side and I'm going to be adding five inches also on this side and with the help of my ruler half inches over there connect with your ruler that's it guys So after connecting all of that guys, you're just going in with your scissors to cut out your panel. At the top over there we're going to be having um, half inch and I'm going to cut that out like so. Moving forward, we're moving forward to the next pattern piece and remember we're adding five inches guys and i'm going to mark my five inches there while i pin Five inches for the bottom and 0 0.5 inches over there and connecting that together with the help of your ruler so guys basically you're just repeating the same step so you're also going to do the same thing for this other side five inches there and connect with your ruler to 0 0.5 inches up there then at the top over there 0 0.5 inches so you repeat these steps for all your panels both for your center back and your center front Now this is what you're going to have or this is what it's going to look like for our center back. Proceeding to cutting the rest of our pattern piece. I'm just going to be pinning that down. So my allowance is going to be one inch for this side 
and for the top and bottom I'm going to be having 0.5 inches So cutting out the rest of our pattern piece, uh, you know the drill guys, we pin before we cut. So I added one inch of allowance to this side. For our bottom, we're going to be adding half of an inch. Um, for that side, also we're going to be adding one inch. For our loophole, we're going to be adding half of an inch and also to the top, half of an inch. I'm proceeding to pin in um, our center front pattern also, pinning them before we add our allowance and cut. So I added half of an inch allowance over there and Basically, for this particular pattern, I'm adding half of an inch everywhere, including the top to the side, half of an inch. For this particular one, I added half of an inch everywhere, apart from where I'm going to have my side joining. So once we're done with cutting all of that, we're proceeding to cutting um, this other piece. Um, so right now I'm just measuring half of an inch over there. And for the top, we're going to measure half of an inch. For the side, we're using one inch for our side. And for the lower part, we're measuring half of an inch. And I'm just basically going to cut that out. Moving forward to our organza piece, this is 30 yards of organza. We advise you use more than 30 yards. Um, so right now I'm folding this salvage to salvage and I'm going to fold that like so. Once I have my desired square, I'm just going to take that point and take it all the way to this other part like this. And I'm going to be pinning this tip. I'll pin the other side also. So from our salvage point, I made it up there 9 inches down to our salvage point and I just marked that down and from our tip over there i measured down to that 9 inches and i had 20.5 inches and i'm just marking that down like so so basically this is more like um drawing a 360 circle next up from you know where we have our 20.5 i measured out 9 inches and once I'm done measuring that out, I'm going to cut that out like so. So the line where we have our 20.5 inches, we're going to be measuring 8 inches all round. And once we're done with that, we're going to be cutting out the 8 inches first. And then we're left with 9 inches below and a cone-like shape, which is at the tip. So I'm going to take this one more time. I fold this salvage to salvage and I fold it one more time to, you know, the other side. If you notice, we've cut out a lot of pieces 
um already so right now i'm just folding it like so again so instead of us just going around and taking the measurement all over again i pick my cone like shape piece and i just place that like so and i'm also going to pick you know our nine inches we cut out and place it at the bottom so i did this for all the 30 yards and we're still going to be using the cone like shape you know the top part of the organza we cut out moving forward to our sewing machine i am going to just be slashing open um, one of our flowers and basically using our horse hair braid so i place our horse hair braid on top of our unganza tip so we're sewing on the part that is very you know wide which is the flounce the lower part of the flounce and we're sewing on 0 0.5 inches so you can also sew on one cm whichever one works for you We're going to be flipping this over like so and we're going to be stitching on the organza and the horse hair braid like less than 1cm if possible. So basically what we're doing is we're joining our horse hair braid to our organza. If you've gotten to this part of this you know video and you're near your subscribe i don't really know what is stopping you or what you're waiting for but please subscribe to my youtube channel don't forget to like share comment and of course click on the dumbbell so you get notified when i post a new video so we're going to be repeating the steps for our flowers like for all our flowers pieces we cut out which is the 30 yards um flowers pieces we've cut out so guys um this is three pieces of our flowers and basically what i'm going to be doing now i'm just going to pin this like so and i'm just going to be cutting this out there's no specific measurement in which i you know trim this out but i just wanted to achieve a straight look over there to also pin and trim some more you know till I was satisfied with my shape and then I move to the other side also and trim off a bit so please guys take note of you know the sequence in which I trim that off next up I went over to pin our three pieces together just so that when I'm weaving, it will be easier for me to weave them together. So I was done pinning, I'm going over to my weaving machine to weave the side of my panel and I'm just going to, you know, label my piece. So you guys already know why we are doing this labeling of piece now, so we don't get confused after sewing. So we know which is which. We're starting with the center front, which is our front panels. And basically I started weaving. Weaving is so easy and you know, 
it's one of the easiest part of sewing honestly This whole process of you know labeling your pairs and then weaving the two sides you're going to do this for your front panels so for the front panels because you cut it on fold you have two pieces then when you open it up you have you're left with four pieces they get yes so I continue weaving this out Once I was done weaving our satin piece, I proceeded to weaving our organza. So this organza I'm weaving is basically that one we pinned the three pieces together. Yes, so this is going to give us our flounce. So you're going to repeat the same process for your front um, panel and mind you, the length we're using because if you notice from the first time we caught we had length of 9 inches and 8 inches the length we use for our front panel is 8 inches when I talk about length I mean um, the organza piece or organza flounce we cut out you know at the beginning of this tutorial I proceeded to get in the midpoint of this um, flowns and next up what I'm going to do is I'm going to be attaching the flowns to you know the panel we cut out that's a satin panel so I'm basically just going to be pinning that like so so you're going to pin this um, right side of the satin facing the left side of the um, organza For the lower bottom, um, we are going to leave out one inch. This one inch is going to be your hemming allowance. And I'm just basically going to be pinning the tip of our organza all the way. So guys, one thing I also want to say is, while joining your organza piece, you might experience, you know, having excess with your flounce, um, which is the organza so you can easily just pleat that out like so So I just created a um, nice um, pleats, you know, around and there's no like specific measurements to which I just pleated this. So I just pleated this randomly.
was done peeling all of this, I proceeded to my sewing machine so I could stitch this together. So don't forget guys, you're going to be leaving one inch hemming allowance at the bottom. So I stitched this all the way to the, you know, ending side. Repeating the same step, I'm just going to be showing you guys one more time. Um, you get to the midpoint and basically just pin that like so. So you pin all the way and stitch down together. Once you're done pinning all of that, I'm guessing you guys already know the routine. You go to your sewing machine and stitch it together. So once you're done with that, we're going to be joining, you know, our flounce together. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to be joining piece by piece together. Remember I told you guys to label your panel piece, your satin panel piece. Right now, this is why you need to label your panel piece. So you'll be able to identify which piece um, is joining with another piece of panel. so I could continue this project for you guys and updates my quinoline yeah this is my quinoline 
it's exhausted so right now i have to i've already ordered i called the guy on the phone and so i'm going to get four more packs i actually thought two pack silly me i thought two pack would be enough for no four packs i ordered four more packs this is going to make it a total of six we're going to be using hopefully that's enough for this tutorial if not i'll update you guys yes so now we're going to move to the upper part of the body which is the main dress not the front for now that's what we're going to be working with so stay tuned don't go anywhere and if you do like my hair bonnet i do have a tutorial up on my youtube channel i'm going to leave you know the link in the description box below so you can check it out in case you're looking up how to learn how to make this cute hair net it looks good actually yeah so let's just head right into this video so far so good this is what we've been able to achieve i don't know if you guys can see this properly but let me step back a bit yep and we still have to attach something here well, I like the way it's turning out. We're not yet done. We still have a lot to do. Like for the flans, I'll say we are twenty percent, you know, to achieving what we want. Yep. Like I'm liking. I love the outcome. Let's see the side view. And we just have three panels. I still have pins in there, so. I'm yet to stitch the lines together. I don't know, I might be sounding so weird. I wonder if I am. I'm curious. I might just pause this video and listen to what I sound like before continuing. But yeah, this is it. This is the inside. So guys, stick around so you get to see the concluding part of this tutorial and I will urge you guys to also click on the dumbbell so you get notified when I post a new video and thank you for watching.